Chip Yarn. Yeah, I feel like Dark has uh, his 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 uh, the way he's been winning these series, the way he beat stats the last time they played against each other, um, is winning through the early game. He gets ahead, but if he doesn't get ahead, stats just gets out of control, and that's what stats has been known for since the beginning. He and Classic, these two pros players that are big macro players. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pro League Giants, classic multi-time champion, a GSL champion and a Star League champion, right? Stats now trying to prove that he is on that same level. Yeah. And he's getting closer to bring us to that game seven. He still has two maps he has to win in a row to take this finals. Yeah, I mean, I thought Central Protocol was going to be hard, but now when I think about Laralag Crest, this map has not done Stats too many favors. He's lost the game against Keen on this map. He hasn't looked good against Zerg on this map. I'm really fearing for him here. If he can get into Runes of Saris, I said this about Central Protocol. If he can get through Central Protocol, it's looking okay. If he can get through this map, it really is anyone's game on Runes of Saris. I say that with total honesty. It's, it will be so close, especially because the momentum is going to be pushing for stats. He beats Laralat Crest, this map that he hasn't had too much luck on. And I, I'm really feeling it here. Yeah. I think the question for Dark is, is his unit comp overused? Does he need to change his style up a little bit here? He went Hydras for a little bit, and he's just been going Bane laying every game into those later on Brew Lords. Maybe it's time for a Lurker, you know? Maybe it's time for a what different lurker? track. Maybe a big, aggressive Ravager Roach push off of two, three bases. Do something different here, because I think Stats is finally starting to figure this Bane style out. Yeah. Spawn position is going to matter a ton here. If they are close, Dark can put on that aggression. If they are far, he may want to go into another macro game. But here it is. I mean, we're, the map is loaded up. Let's jump into it, guys. It's game number six of Dark versus Stats. This is anyone's championship. Let's get into it. Is your map for game number six. And up in the top right, the Red Zerg. Up a game. It is dark. There's a shot of him there on that sign. So many SKT fans here down at the Sage on Grand Hall. Now to the top left in blue, though, his opponent trying to bring it back. It is stats. Bring us nearly to game seven here. Going down 0-2, winning a game, then falling down 1-3. Brings it now to a 3-2 score. It looked like he was gonna roll over and die after those first three games, but Stats he really said did. no. He really did, I didn't want to say it. See him in the booth, I'm like, that's the weakest Stats I've ever seen. But he has taught us a lesson. No one is ever down and out. You know, it happens sometimes, but this guy has given us all hope. I predicted coming into this one 4-2. We're at 3-2, but I, I'm feeling I'm feeling like stats really could do it here on this map. Now, spawn positions, I feel like they do favor Dark here. He definitely can put on that aggression, break down the back rocks, try to get in there. But again, if stats plays very safe, tries to just turtle on three bases, you know, get some sentries up, defend, defend, get to that late game. You were saying it before, he's looking pretty good there. Yeah, this is the, these spawning positions, even like specifically the right side of the map where Dark is, we've seen on this map countless times, Hydra, Lurker, Domination. Look back at Solar's ZVPs. Look at Fjol's ZVPs, hell, Dark ZVPs before he was going into this Baneling style. It was the name of the game on this map. Brosses are struggling. Classic fell out of this tournament to that style, yep. playing this very map, okay? So this is the time, I think, for Dark to use these Hydras, break down the rocks, poke at the third base, set up Lurkers, get ahead, deny the fourth base. That's the way to change the style up. Maybe that's what Stats expects. Maybe he's going to instead, you know, go for that Bane League style again. Meanwhile, Stats is going three gates. He's uh, increasing Whoa. the adapt pressure potential here at these close spawns. This is really interesting. He's getting a probe up here, too. He wants to see what's going on. And uh, could, you know, perhaps lay down some pylons if he wants to get really, really aggressive. Looks like the Mothership Corps is already in position to possibly do that. But an early speed here from Dark is going to deny that probe. Cancels his shade here as well to make sure that uh, 
The wall is tight. He doesn't want him to see anything more. The Overlord already sees the three gates, though. He makes them all at the front. This is the first game in this series we don't see a Stargate opener from Stats. The very first time. One of six games shows it. Okay, there we go. There they are. We're going to see Banelings again. And this time he doesn't have Phoenixes to shut him down. This is just really interesting. I mean, he's going to be able to get right to the main. He could also, uh, he's got this Overlord over here near the front. He could move that down, bring some lanes over there, morph him, and drop into the natural at the same time. I mean, in the past, when you saw Baneling drops, they usually happened at the same time. One into the natural, one into the main. You know, back in the day. Couldn't see that again out of dark. He's already making those links. Yeah. We have two Stargates coming up for stats. This is made right in front of Dark's face, so he knows what he's up against. He wants to get this damage done early. He knows there's very few units on the ground. These six Adepts Whoa. are the only ground army for stats. 16 links on the map. He's going to need more than that, though. Yeah, he needs more to deal with these Adepts. And the Adepts are already into the natural. That's a, another feature of this four-player map. It's not that big when you spawn at this location. Six Adepts getting into a really nice position. I think they've got some shades out there. Not sure if they canceled. Looks like yeah, they, they did. Canceled. All right, this drop, though, hasn't been scouted yet from stats. He has two Phoenixes on the way. They're not here yet. And a shade again. Going to stop these adepts from getting surrounded here. Going to go back to the wall here. Shading away. Trading well versus these lings. Trading pretty well, but the lings will win out in the end, I think. Well, no. Going to survive mostly here. And here we go. This is the drop. This is it. How much damage can he get done with these four banelings? Oh, an immediate pull. He sees it. He knows the tactics already. And the Phoenixes are in position to snipe this Overlord. The Banelings do come out, but they're not going to get that much damage as long as Stat splits his army. Yep. Should get two probes max. Oh my god, doesn't even get those. Get shields on Adepts. That's nothing. That is nothing. The Banelings do not do the damage, and the Adepts that come out on the map have done decent. They denied the mining at the third for a long time. The lair is a lot later this time. The drone count is not as higher, and the army for the Protoss stays alive. He has a lot of Phoenixes in the air. He could go for a Phoenix at that timing here. That's exactly what he's going to do. Don't forget that he had a better economy for, than Dark for such a long there time because of the aggressive. Made. Yeah. But he, he was so aggressive that Dark didn't have a good economy. Now he just droned because he needed to catch up. He is now even in workers with Stats. So Stats has this nice window of time to make this work. Not going to commit, though. Not yet. He's going to do some more harassment here with these Phoenixes. Continual Phoenix production. He's just going to control the skies. Yeah, he's going to overdo the Phoenix production in a way. Uh, get as many Phoenixes out as possible. And uh, he is getting that third base up now. So he isn't trying to hit any really fast timing here. I think he could have done a lot of damage. But with a bunch of Banelings out and some decent crease spread at least down the bottom of the ramp, maybe he's like, ah, you know, not feeling it. I'd rather go into the later game here. Well... Eight Phoenix is on the map. Dark finally takes that worker lead. No fourth base available for him just yet. It's tough to take on this map when you're up against this many Phoenixes. They're going to kill your drone. Nidus. Whoa. Did not expect this. So he's got a lot of queens. Uh, maybe a few less after this, though. There you go. Transfuses by the one queen on the ground. Yeah, she's lucky to stay alive here, but Dark's still going to be lifted. A spore coming over. Two more Phoenixes to join the fight. This is really going to weaken the Nidus play. It really is. The queens are so crucial. You need those transfuses to transfuse, and there's only three queens left and not that much energy. Three more to pop out. Lenox not looking optimistic about this one. <laughs> not for not for Dark, of course. For stats, he's very happy. All right, Roach speed and six Roaches on the way. It's going to be an attack that has to continue to get a tempo advantage. Stats keeping his Phoenixes over here. He hasn't seen the Nidus yet. He's not he reacting. Knows. I don't think he, he's not reacting. Okay, okay now, now he, he knows. Here we go. The Depths trying to get to the main. And Vorpin's coming in, but the Nidus gets down. The probes come off the line oh, at the same time. Oh, we hear the natural. He's going to lose so many probes. The Lings will be pushed away, but Roach is coming out already. A lot of Queens. Phoenix lifts here are so important. Gets all of the Queens in the sky, and he focuses down that Nidus just barely. Now he's only got to deal with the units in here. And with all of these Phoenixes, he should be able to. It's not over yet. Some no. damage. There's another there's another Nidus coming in. I don't know where it is, but there's another Nidus morphing in. Looks like it's in the main. There oh, it yeah, is. There it is. Okay, here comes the reinforcements. And Roach Speed is nearly done. He's running out of Phoenix energy. He's lost so many probes already. Looks like he's just going to abandon the main. He can't hold it for now. Spores. Spores are coming down. Spores coming in. And he's just got so many Roaches on the way. Speed's almost finished. And you can't lift Morphing Spores. You just simply can't. You can't do it. You can lift that Queen to try to give your Mothership Core a chance at killing that Nidus. 
He hasn't gone for it yet, he just wants to lift the roaches. So many roaches coming in with speed now, 17 of them on the map. A few lifts here, but Lings are going to break down the front as well. Satch's tournament life is on the line here. This is his one chance, his one opportunity to be a champion, but I think he's lost it. It I looks like that's it. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to hold. Boxer watches on as his protege kills this Protoss in this game. It looks like he's done it. GG! Dark is your Star League champion. He will take it finally here in a long drawn out series. Four to two is the score. He wins in front of the entire crowd, in time in front of the entire world. What an unbelievable finals and what an unbelievable player. What a play in that last one too, to go for the night display. So confident, knew it would work, and it just works with flying colors, Wolf. He knows that Stats doesn't have that many units. He knows that the Phoenixes are running out of energy. They used a lot of the energy earlier. Dark, finally a champion. All of his hard work ever since his days on Slayers pays off.